Hey, I'm Arcee and this is the third episode of How It's Made in Raining Chain. In this video, I'll be covering maps. So how I convert a map file, so a TMX file, into an actual map that you see in the game. Um, but first, I want to do a little overview of the features related with map in Raining Chain. So obviously, there's the rendering of the map. Um, the map, how it works is that there's actually two layers. So as you can see, when I move um, below behind that tree, I can move behind it. So I got two layers for the map, I also have collision. So if I try to go down, I will be stopped. So this is also related with the map. So the game is able to know uh, what is solid, what is not solid. Another little feature I have is um, in stairs, the player will slow down. It's not really obvious, but it does make a big difference. And um, I also got special tiles. So for example, those are special tiles. So they slow down the, the player. I also have special tiles with uh, water. So for example, water, you can shoot, bullets go through them, but the player itself cannot go there. So that's um, something special. And finally, I got um, a new feature in the game. It's quite new, it's still in, in progress. It's the random dungeon. Uh, whoops, it's gonna help. So in the random dungeon, all the, the rooms are randomly generated. So as you can see, well, it's not really randomly generated, but I'm gonna cover that later. Like how I, I managed to do this with the current um, setup. So in order to create a new map in Rain Chain, those are the five steps. Um, first, we want to create the map. So the file, the TMX file, um, I'm using the software tiled. Um, it's a free software. I've already talked about it in my single player and multiplayer tutorial series. Um, it's really useful. And once we have the map done, we want to load it from the client. So the client will do a query and grab the file from the server. The client will generate the collision grid, it will generate the image, and then it will render it on the screen. The server will also um, generate the collision grid in order to prevent cheating. So a player cannot just walk through everything. Everything needs to be validated by the server. So this is the software tiled. Um, I'm gonna go really quickly over it. My goal in this tutorial, um, this video is not to show you how to create maps or things like that. Just give you a really quick overview of the software. So you got the, the tile set over here. So in Raining Chain, there are nine tile sets. There's the ground, there's the walls, um, houses, bridges, decoration, decoration for um, caves, outdoor, decoration for villages, indoors, and finally a special layer, a uh, tile set I meant, um, with spots. I'm gonna cover that a little bit later. So normally what I do when I create a new map is do the uh, layout. So do all the mountains and all the, the big stuff. Then after that, I do the ground and I make sure that every layers um, have a different color. Then I add the solid decoration because that's gonna affect the gameplay and then I just add a bunch of random decoration and I can put as many of those because players can walk through it. And finally, final decoration, that's pretty much it. So yeah, Earlier I mentioned the spot layer, and this is used for positioning NPCs. So let's say I want to spawn an NPC in the map. Um, what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna add a spot from the, the tile set 9, gonna add it to the, the spot layer, and let's say I put it over here. So N5 is now a spot in the game engine, and I can specify it to spawn something. So I could spawn an NPC at position N5. I could spawn a tree at position B, for example. So I never hard code the, the X and Y position, I always refer to a, a spot and it makes it a lot more convenient to, to position things and move things around, so yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the four other steps which are done in-game with code. So I created a class called the TMX Parser and um, the first thing we want to do is to load the map, so I use um, jQuery Ajax. So this is to do a query on the server and get a file dynamically. So normally you use like a, a script tag, something like that, and then you can specify um, the source. But if you want to do it dynamically with the T 
dynamically generated um, path, you want to use Ajax. So I, this is the variable URL um, that points towards one of those files and the player just grabs it. Um, so the TMX file internally, it's a XML and it's pretty easy to parse. jQuery can parse it automatically for you and it's pretty standard. So I can extract the, the different layers, the tile sets. And um, I think the first thing I do is I load all the images part of the tile set. And once they are all loaded, um, I can start actually like calculating stuff with the encoding. So every numbers over here represent one of the tile. So this is the ground zero. This could be for like most likely the one over here is grass. And this is another color of grass. And this is ground, so something like that. So I get all the layers with all the, it's called, all the layers with all the tiles with all the images used for every square. So the first thing I do after loading the map is to generate the collision grid. So it's a 2D array and um, for each of each tile, there's a value that will be either um, zero if you can walk on it, one if you cannot walk on it, for example, a wall, uh, and there's also two if you can walk on it, but it slows you down, or three if it's water, so bullets can go on it, but the player cannot walk on it. So those are like the, the four values, and I need to specify it for every little square in the game. And all the um, how it works is that I start off at the, the highest uh, layer and I check a hey, does this tile has is solid or is special let's say this one is the spot layer special no then I skip to the next one collision no then deco is it solid no 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 and eventually I will reach um, this one wall one and the, the volume over here which is I don't really know but let's say this one it will have a value, let's say this one, and this is solid, so I'm gonna mark the, the tile as solid, and I will break the loop, so I'm not gonna continue and check the other layers, because as soon as you have a wall, it does not, like there's no point in checking the, the stuff underneath, it's the first one that counts. Yeah. So in order to know what numbers are solid and what numbers are not solid, um, what I did, is I got like a big list over here. So there we go. So this is the list of all the tiles that are solid. So whenever I see one of those numbers, I mark the tile as solid. And in order to generate that, I did not make it uh, manually, don't worry. Um, how it works is that I got this file over here. So it's my entire tile set next to each other. And then I marked everything that is solid with red. And then I save it and then I do some calculation and I'm able to generate this grid over here. So I got it for all the solid stuff. I got it for the water over here. Um, the above layer, that's another thing. Above, it seems wrong. Anyway and the bridge and the slow and so on. So I, I use that to generate those numbers. So here's the actual code. So I got the TMX parser over here. I filter all the layers that I want to consider um, drawing because I don't want to consider, for example, the spot layer, whoops, over here. The spot layer will never have something solid. So there's no point in looping on it. Same goes for the collision and above over right. Um, so I loop through each of them and if it's a special tile, then I say a hey, the collision layer as this value and then I break. Is that, it's as simple as that. And this over here converts a position, so a number into its collision code. So zero if it's um, not actually zero. I think if it's a normal tile, it returns undefined. If it's solid, it returns one. If it's a bridge, it returns two, so on. So if it's not undefined, and that means it's special, and um, yeah, so I do that for all the tiles. And then there's the um, collision overwrite. So you might have noticed the collision overwrite. So this allows me to override the, um, the stuff that is automatically generated. 
For example, over here, I don't want players to be able to walk on it because I got another thing over here, which is a chest. And um, players can actually squeeze here, but it looks really sketchy. So I manually say, no, you cannot go over here and over there, you cannot also go. Because you could sneak under, like behind the shop. So the next step and probably the most important step is to generate the images. So there are three images I need to generate. There is the above layer, below layer and the minimap. So just a little recap between um, the above and the below layers. So um, normally like the grass right now is drawn below the player. But this tree over here is drawn above the player. But the bottom of the tree is drawn below the player. So the tree is actually half top and half bottom. Um, so yeah, I need the code for it. And visually how it looks, if I do a desync, there we go. So this is part of the above layer and this over here is part of the below layer. So right now there's no, like the above is next to me. So yeah, if I only add one layer, it would look something like this. So two layers is um, really needed for it to work. Let's put it back. There we go. Okay, so to actually draw the image, it's rather simple. It's just this function over here. I loop through every um, layers. If I need to draw the layer, because I got some layers I don't want to draw, for example, the spot layer, I don't want to draw those. So if I need to draw them, then I loop through everything in the grid and I just draw them. I draw the tile. Um, to draw the tile, there's a little formula. I won't really go over it, but it calculates uh, what tile set I need to use and with what offset I'm using the tile ID. And then it just draw the, the little tile. It's pretty straightforward. And um, one thing I changed to make it more efficient is that I realized where was I? Okay. One thing I realized is that most of the time the computer will draw a transparent tile and that's really not um, efficient because if we check over here, I would say 50% even more than that, like 90% of the tiles are just zeros. So there is no point in drawing the tile zero. Well, zero is an undefined tile, so you won't draw it. But there are numbers over here that are still transparent. So let's say I take, um, I don't know, this over here, I take those and I place it over here. Yeah, wait, um, hmm. Technical problem, okay, over here. So this style over here, this here as a number, even though it's transparent, there's a number, the number over here. The computer does not know that it's transparent, but it is, so I, Using this over here, I also have a transparent chart. So all the tiles that's transparent and that the computer should not draw because there's just no point to it. So it seems like nothing, but I do save probably 20%. It's mostly for, for mountains. So I, I probably save like 20% CPU just by not drawing those. Because the computer cannot know that it's gonna be transparent before drawing it. I also have a little system with opaque um, tiles. I don't really go over it, but um, let's say that um, over here, water please work. Okay, L let's say the grass underneath here. There's no point in, let's say the, here. So there's no point in drawing the grass here if anyway I'm gonna override the grass with a tree image. So what I do is I, I pre um, pre process the images to remove all those useless drawing. So for example, for this style over here, the only thing I'm gonna draw is one tree. While in theory, what I should have done without optimization is drawing the grass, then drawing the tree. So two draws when only one is needed. So this saves quite a lot, probably like easily I half the, um, the amount of draws needed to render the map with this technique. So this is the logic used for the hidden tiles. I just loop through them and as soon as I see a opaque um, tile, I overwrite all the things be below it with zero. 
So the grass would become zero and zero means draw nothing. And finally for the minimap, it's um, I use the, the below layer that was generated and I just render it in another canvas, but four times smaller and that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, one important thing to do is to sharp it. Um, there's um, something called um, image smoothing enable and this will keep the sharpness so everything will be um, like with nearest neighbor because by default there's a um, a blur that's applied to make it more smooth but for pixel art you don't want things to look smooth you want to um, see things sharp so that's one little thing you can do and it makes a, a big difference so yeah, I guess that's pretty much it about uh, map rendering. I hope you liked it and don't forget to um, post in the comment section what you want me to cover in the next episode. So thanks for watching and see ya.